Hello and welcome to The Big Picture. This is the program where we review the main themes of the Adult Sabbath School Lesson of the Week. This quarter we are studying the book of Hebrews and today's episode is based on lesson number eight which is titled Jesus, the Mediator of the New Covenant. Before we get into today's study, let's pause and pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you that Jesus came to this world as one of us, that he died for us and that he intercedes for us and that he mediates on our behalf. As we delve into that today and explore it more, I pray that we'll get greater appreciation for what Jesus has done for us that will not only inspire us, but it will bless us and guide us in our walk with you. We thank you for our time together in your word now. Bless us in your name. Amen. I hold in my hand my mobile phone. It is actually more than just a phone. It can take photos, videos. I can access the internet through it, run a number of applications and do a whole lot of other things. I remember the first mobile phone I owned. It was a Nokia. It could make and receive phone calls and send and receive messages. It worked well in its time, but since has been superseded by newer models. The old has been replaced by something new, something better. To start the discussion in your group, get your group members to share on the following. Share about a favorite gadget or item you used to have until you finally had to replace it with a new and improved model. Our lesson this week looks at the topic of the covenant in the book of Hebrews. It talks about an old covenant and a new covenant. In Hebrews, the old covenant refers to the Old Testament sacrificial system. It then speaks of Jesus as high priest, who is the mediator of a new covenant. As it says in our memory verse, but in fact, the ministry of Jesus has received is as superior to theirs as the covenant of which he is mediator is superior to the old one. Notice how Hebrews contrasts the two covenants. It says this, if perfection could have been attained through the Levitical priesthood, and indeed the law given to the people established that priesthood, why was there still need for another priest to come, one in the order of Melchizedek? not in the order of Aaron. The former regulation is set aside because it was weak and useless, for the law made nothing perfect, and a better hope is introduced by which we draw near to God. That's Hebrews 7, 11, 18 to 19. And then Hebrews 8, it says, For if there had been nothing wrong with that first covenant, no place would have been sought for another. But God found fault with the people and said, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant. Discuss these questions as you read these passages. What are the differences between the old and new covenant? Why was a new covenant needed? What was wrong with the old one? What is worth noting is that the writer of Hebrews does not rubbish or scorn the Old Covenant. He doesn't say it is bad, as some conclude from reading Hebrews. Rather, the point is that the Old Covenant was inadequate. The focus of the Old Covenant, as it is of the New, is to deal with the problem of sin and its removal. The Old was through the sacrificial system. The New is through Jesus. The Old Covenant was inadequate because it could not ultimately deal with the removal of sin. Thus, it was limited. But Jesus, as the Lamb, the sacrifice, and through his high priestly ministry, can remove sin. Notice how Hebrews describes this. It is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. That's referring to the Old Covenant. 
Then referring to the new covenant, it says, How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death, so that we may serve the living God? For this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant, that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. Now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from the sins committed under the first covenant. As we saw in an earlier presentation, a key word in the book of Hebrews is better. One of its main messages is to portray Jesus as being superior or better than any one or thing. So here we see Jesus as both the sacrifice and priest. Therefore, he inaugurates a new covenant that is better. As it clearly states in Hebrews 7.22, Jesus has become the guarantor of a better covenant. The writer of Hebrews wanted his readers and us to know that in Jesus, we have a better covenant. Note three points here. First, the new covenant is better because it alone can decisively remove sins. Second, the new covenant has a better mediator. As it states in chapter 8, verse 6, the covenant of which he, Jesus, is mediator, is superior to the old one. The lesson study God on Tuesday explains that in the original Greek language, the word mediator can have a number of meanings. A mediator can have one of the following functions. One, an arbiter between two parties. Two, a negotiator. Three, a witness who certifies the existence of documents. Or four, a guarantor who makes sure that the agreement is executed. In the book of Hebrews, it is this fourth function of a mediator that is referred to. Jesus is the guarantor of the new covenant in that he guarantees that the covenant promises will be fulfilled. Friends, this is good news. No wonder this new covenant is called better. The third point that our lesson brought out is that the new covenant has better promises. Notice again Hebrews 8, 6. But in fact, the ministry Jesus has received is as superior to theirs as the covenant of which he is mediator is superior to the old one, since the new covenant is established on better promises. What are the better promises of the covenant? The promise is to deal with our sin problem. The new covenant does this by Jesus' perfect life and his sacrifice on the cross. By his perfect life, Jesus fulfilled the demands or conditions of the covenant. Jesus perfectly obeyed the law. His obedience met the conditions of the covenant. And by faith, his perfect life is offered to us. His death paid the penalty for our sins, thus cancelling the death penalty that our sins required. That's why it says in Hebrews 10.10, by that will, that is Jesus' life, his obedience, We have been made holy. This is incredibly good news. Jesus, the better priest, is the mediator of a better covenant because, as we'll see next week, his better sacrifice deals with our sin problem. Furthermore, the new covenant is better because it writes God's laws on our hearts. As we look to apply this lesson, why not reflect on these questions in your group? Which aspect of the new covenant is most meaningful to you? Read Hebrews 8, 10 to 12. In what ways is it helpful to know that Christ is the guarantor, making sure his promises are fulfilled? And how does the fact that all of God's promises are yes in Christ help you? Well, thank you for watching The Big Picture. 
If you would like to get in contact with us or would like to have the big picture sent directly to your phone or email, send us a message using the contact details on the screen. May the Lord richly bless you as you study his word. Thank you.